The high deserts of Idaho, Oregon, and Nevada are home to a subspecies of the bighorn sheep, the California bighorn. In 2022, a working group of state and federal wildlife agencies, the Wild Sheep Foundation, state chapters, and affiliates established the ION Partnership to cooperatively manage these sheep populations in such a vast, remote, and rugged environment. The ION group was formed a year or so ago, so this is our second year within this Idaho, Oregon, Nevada working group or initiative. Funds are acquired through the Wild Sheep Foundation to do these kind of projects. It's a larger scale project. It's going over multiple jurisdictions. The funding that it takes to do one of these projects is pretty extensive and funding is critical. We're just happy that we can help support them. We call it the ION Initiative, Idaho, Oregon, Nevada. All three states are coming together, doing a lot of good work here in this part of the world. And so the Wild Sheep Foundation is happy to support. It's a big effort, obviously, to capture these animals. It's expensive, these helicopter captures. It's not cheap. These are really important projects to come together and, and realize that there aren't any borders or lines that these animals are going to see. And you're going to just help accomplish those goals much faster if you can come together. These populations were once robust, but are now down to less than half of their numbers from 20 years ago. Some reasons are unknown. MOV and other diseases, lion predation, lack of water, and lack of genetic variability are all possible factors. To try and answer the question why, ION decided to go big through a Wild Sheep Foundation GIA grant and funding from the state chapters to survey, capture, and collar across all three states in far greater numbers than before. here doing a test and removal capture as an effort jointly with Nevada. We share a herd of sheep that share the border. They've had problems with mycoplasma ovo pneumonia in the past which causes severe pneumonia, lots of mortality and then you know poor land recruitment in the following years. So there's been a lot of research going into how to test, what the best protocols are, we're getting blood, fecal, ultrasound. Also, anytime we get our hands on one, we need to make sure we're getting the most information. With those PCR tests, we can also run a strain type, and that strain matched the Santa Rosa strain. So between the collars moving up and down the herd range that Nevada put out and we put out, and strain type, we were able to document that movement between the states. This is where we kind of targeted in on those herds that aren't doing well. And so this is one of our really strong efforts to, to help rebound this population. In this herd, it was uh, established from a transplant from the Steens Mountains in uh, 1992. And it was actually funded by a Wild Sheep Foundation supporter. It's a challenge we've had in this corner of the world as far as what sheep were here because they were extirpated by about 1915. Our forefathers, biologists, did their best to match what sheep they thought they belonged here, and so we've managed these as Californias. We are down on the Jarbridge River, been surveying bighorn sheep here in the Jarbridge and Bruno River Canyons, Hawaii County in, in far southern Idaho, right on the Nevada border. Typically, we fly California bighorns in in June, and we've done that historically for years. This last year, in 2021, we only had 26 sheep. We didn't have any class three, class four rams in that survey. There's a lot of country down here. The rams aren't necessarily tied to the canyons like the ewes and lambs are. They can be anywhere, and it's really easy to miss them in a survey. At one point in history, there was more bighorn sheep down here than there were elk and mule deer. Disease has changed that for wild sheep. I can't stress how important it is for the role that hunters can play in the conservation and management of wild sheep. For instance, when we first detected MOV down here, it was a hunter that witnessed a ram coughing with some nasal discharge. He harvested another ram in that bunch and we were able to collect samples from that ram and, and detected MOV. We've got a very good relationship with Idaho Wild Sheep Foundation. They're very passionate members and they've helped in all aspects of, you know, anytime we have a capture or, you know, for instance, they're helping fund this survey down here. We have questions, different questions for different populations of sheep around the state. You know, so for in the Waihees, we needed some movement data, some, um, we wanted an update on their health status. We wanted some habitat use data. And we're also interested in cause-specific mortality there. 
We don't have any recent information on that. So we really needed a kind of an overall picture of the Owyhee sheep populations in Japs Creek and the Owyhee Front. I've been fortunate to draw a tag in Idaho, so I've hunted bighorns. Um, this is the first time I've ever got to put my hands on a live wild sheep, and it was an emotional experience, I would say, just kind of get to touch them and, and kind of be a part of this. To be doing something to give back and help expand these populations, give more people opportunities to, to spend time in the field with them. I don't know, it's just kind of a pretty deep feeling of some kind. I don't know how you would explain the feeling, but future generations are gonna have a chance to enjoy like, like we're enjoying in the day. I'd really like to give a special thanks to the Idaho Department of Fish and Game, and again, Wild Sheep Foundation for, for their grant and aid in, in this project. Seeing all the people out here coming together with a common objective to help put sheep on the mountain, that's what we're here for. In this challenging landscape, it takes everyone working together to keep California bighorn sheep on the mountain. And that's what ION is doing.